Welcome to part two of three, setting up JRebel. We're going to be using an Eclipse IDE, but you can use your IDE of choice and the steps are going to be extremely similar. First of all, we're going to install the JRebel plugin into Eclipse, and the easiest way to do this is via the Eclipse Marketplace. JRebel is a featured plugin, so you'll be able to see that easily and, and follow the wizard. Alternatively, you could use the install new software route by using the repository on screen now. Once that's all set up, you could, you'll be able to see this option, the JRebel Config Center. We're going to open this now, and as you can see, there are a number of different things you can configure. We're going to click straight to the activation section, and here you can activate your license either as a file, as a license code, or by using a license server URL. This is the recommended route if you're using a large number of uh, developer licenses. This is just for me, so I'm going to I'm going to enter in a directory path, a file path, to my JRebel license and straight away we're going to see that JRebel has been activated on my instance. That's awesome, I can now start using JRebel. Alternatively, if I click browse, I can view the file manager to find my JRebel key. Now let's go back to the overview. From here, we can now actually start configuring JRebel on our environment, either in our servers or our projects. The first thing I'm going to do is enable my Tomcat server. I can do this just by selecting it. I'm also going to enable a project, the Pet Clinic project. We'll note on the bottom right here, you can see that automatic publishing has been disabled. We'll look into this in uh, more detail later on. Let's have a look in the JRebel Config Center to see what else is of use. Here we can also add external servers or remote servers as well as point to another JRebel jar, which will uh, allow us to make use of newer nightly builds and so on. In the plugins part, this, this is the, the sheer number of frameworks which JRebel supports, and here we can enable or disable frameworks in the runtime. So for example, I can click on Tile 1 plugin and click uh, Enable, which will allow my runtime to make use of that. Over on the Advanced tab, among other settings, uh, this is where you would change your JRebel logging level, but we're not going to be doing this right now. So, over on our workspace, we've now enabled JRebel on the Pet Clinic project, as well as the server. If I open up the server, I can see that I've enabled it from the Enable JRebel Agent checkbox. I can also see that Never Publish Automatically has been set, so Eclipse isn't going to automatically publish when I make changes to my workspace. As a result, we can now start the server. And if I open the console so we can look at that in more detail, the first thing that we would see straight away is the JRebel header. The JRebel header includes a whole bunch of information for us, including the location of the JRebel log file, as well as information about the number of reloads we've prevented and the time saved. We can also see who the product is licensed to, and also, just beneath that, the uh, list of plugins which are currently disabled in case you're not getting the behavior you expect during your runtime. We also show the latest version of JRebel which is available to download. In this case, I need to upgrade my level. So, the next thing we need to do is look at our project. Under the uh, JRebel menu, we can see that JRebel has been enabled. We can also have options here to enable remoting or set our advanced properties. Let's go into that now. Here I'm going to click on a Generate uh, Rebel XML and Open Rebel XML. This is the file which, when deployed in the application to our, to our runtime, will describe to the runtime where it should look for the, for the uh, latest versions of our classes and web resources. These are the three directories which our runtime will monitor. Okay, now it's time to actually deploy our application to our server, and by doing this, we're also deploying the Rebel XML. So our JRebel enabled runtime now is aware of these three directories. Okay, if I open my console again, not only will we see the uh, header right at the top of that file, but we're also going to see some additional uh, logging from JRebel which will describe which directories it's monitoring. So these three directories here which JRebel is uh, saying it's monitoring are going to be the exact same ones in the JRebel XML. We're also monitoring other resources such, for, such as Log4J properties, JDBC XML, Data Source XML and a Spring Descriptor.
So that's it, Jarebel is now enabled in our development environment. You can now view part 3 of 3 and see what happens when we run using Jarebel.